What's the difference between incredibly successful entrepreneurs such as Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk from say your local barber who might run a great business but will never have the financial freedom that truly affluent entrepreneurs have? Luck definitely plays a huge part, as does talent, but I'd argue the main separator in Bezos and Musk is their inherent understanding of the value of exponential asymmetric risk taking. Hey guys, how's it going? This is the first video in my new mental model series where I attempt to explain in a simple way mental models that can help you think better. So if that's something you're interested in, press subscribe and you'll be notified monthly when I release them. Over the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna talk about the benefits of asymmetric risk. First, I'm gonna talk through four different types of risk and then explain why specifically exponential asymmetric risk separates those who are financially free from those who aren't. Finally, I'll try and give some practical ways about how we can better expose ourselves to these kinds of risks. Generally, when we talk about risk, we're talking about the potential relationship between what you invest and what you reap. Investment can come in a number of forms from financial investment to the more important one of time. And reward could be a number of things as well, but to keep things simple, when I talk about the reward of risk, I'm just gonna be referring to financial reward. The way I see it, risk can generally fall into four categories. You have linear versus exponential risk and symmetric versus asymmetric risk. If these terms confuse you, don't worry, I'm gonna explain them all in detail. Linear risk refers to the type of risk where the amount invested, be that time or money, generally leads to a predictable reward. And the best way to explain this is to look at someone like a mechanic. Now, a mechanic who gets paid by the hour, if he works twice as hard or four times as hard, he's just going to receive twice as much or four times as much pay. And as you can see from the graph here, it's basically a linear correlation. If the mechanic wanted to earn 100 times what he's earning now, it wouldn't be feasibly possible because there just isn't enough time in the day. Now let's look at the example of exponential risk using the gold prospector as an example. Now every minute the gold prospector is working and not finding any riches, his reward is actually going down because he's not seeing any benefit from the investment that he's made. However, as soon as he finds a nugger or a vein, the reward spikes massively, resulting in this exponential curve. The gold prospector could potentially spend a lifetime panning for gold and not finding anything, or he could find a vein within the first 20 minutes of him working. And this is the nature of exponential risk. It's incredibly unpredictable. But what is certain is the chances of you seeing any upside from an exponential risk are very, very small. Now we've had a look at exponential and linear risk, let's turn to asymmetric and symmetric. And when we use these terms, all we're referring to is the limit to the upside and the downside that you can be exposed to from taking a risk. Let's say you invest in your friend's business and he's promised to you that if the business plan all goes according to plan, you're gonna receive a thousand times what you initially invested. Your friend hasn't actually incorporated the company and is operating as a sole trader. And down the line, it turns out how he's actually making his money is watering down hand sanitizer and selling it to the NHS for a profit. All of a sudden, the company faces lawsuits and a potentially unlimited cost in reparations to all the people that your business partner has scammed. And this is an example of symmetric risk. You've expose yourself to the potential upside of the business doing well but you've also exposed yourself to the downside so even though you could make a thousand times your money you could also lose a thousand times your money now if that company was incorporated and you'd insured against potential litigations resulting from the sale of the product that would be an example of asymmetric risk because the downside that you could experience would be limited to how much you've invested in the company now, if we combine exponential risk and asymmetric risk together, what we actually have is the business model that venture capital firms have been utilizing since their inception. How venture capital firms operate is they will invest a set amount of money in a company that they expect can return a thousand or more times on their investment. But because they're only investing their money and nothing else, 
by a function of that, they've massively limited their downside to the money that they've invested in. And the whole venture capital business model is based around the fact that most of the investments that they make won't actually succeed. But the ones that do succeed are going to succeed so massively that they'll more than make up for the ones that failed. Now, I believe that we should all be thinking a bit more like venture capitalists in our lives and trying to seek out opportunities where we can expose ourselves to exponential and asymmetric risk. Most of us are probably only involved in pursuits that actually involve linear risk. And the best example for this is climbing the corporate ladder. Say you join an accountancy firm and you start on 40K a year. You can be pretty much guaranteed that if you put in the investment of time and effort, over time that salary is gonna increase. You'll become a manager and be earning you know, 100K, then you'll be a partner and earning 300K. But if you work 10 times as hard, you're not gonna earn any more than 10 times what you're earning now. You're just going to accelerate your potential to advance through the corporate ladder. Now this type of risk is a great foundation. Unless you're an Arab prince, we all need a way to guarantee ourselves regular steady income. But if this is the only risk that we take in life, this, this linear, very progressive risk, then we're gonna find it very hard to ever reach complete financial freedom because the payoff is never gonna be large enough to allow us to escape these jobs. While it's great that we have these linear risk profiles in our lives, it can be really beneficial to use either the leftover time or cash to put into risks that might be a bit more non-linear and exponential. And you don't need a ton of money to make something like this happen. All you really need at the beginning is time. Take, for example, setting up a YouTube channel. This is a good example of asymmetric risk because if you can build an audience of even 10,000 or 100,000 people, they're then gonna be so involved in the story that you're telling that they're going to want to help you out and they're gonna get real value from any products that you might be able to sell them in the future. So this is why I think starting a YouTube channel and building an audience is a great example of something that doesn't require a lot of cost, just a camera and a microphone, but can potentially yield really, really great results. I'm personally also working on creating a software product, which you can check out by looking at my website. I'll leave it in the description below. And while this may not pay off at all, there could potentially be a really big upside if it's a success. Most of us probably have the skills that we could make a product that someone will love and capitalize on that exponential risk. And if you don't, then there's so many videos and tutorials out there about how to learn basically any new skill that there's really no excuse for everyone not to be trying to create, I think, some kind of product. So I hope you found that explanation of the four different risk profiles helpful and that how by combining the exponential and the asymmetric risks together, we can actually allow ourselves to take lots of small little bets, which may potentially have a huge payoff. And I'd just like to re-emphasize that point of taking sort of small manageable risks you definitely should not be taking all of your savings and putting it into something that you think has potential upside, you know, the next Uber or whatever, uh, that would be pretty foolish. But starting by looking at how you're spending your free time, where you could use that to potentially build a product or a business that would have a really great upside, I think is a really useful way to look at the world, especially if you think that you might have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years left in your career. If you're taking one of these risks every two or three years, really putting yourself into it, surely over the long run, you're gonna increase your odds of getting a big payout from one of these risks and ultimately helping you to be less financially dependent on a nine to five job.